Hello, hello, dear friends. My name is Echo, just in case you're new here. So I made a thing, and it's stupid, but also kind of amazing. For the sake of clarity and blasphemy, I would like to point out that I didn't really play the Sonic games as a kid, and I'm also not really a super fan of Sonic. Sonic is okay, nothing against the franchise. I could probably get into it very easily. There's a bunch of really cool lore out there on the internet that I would love to read about. That being said, I'm stupidly excited for the Sonic movie. Just in case you like live in a cave that doesn't have Wi-Fi, there was a huge thing that happened a couple months ago. So I believe there was a Sonic movie that was supposed to come out this year, but when the trailer dropped, it kind of cracked the surface of the internet just a little bit. It was a disaster. It was hideous. It was absolutely awful. I'm putting this picture in the video because critique and review, terrible design. After the trailer dropped, the internet was very insulted and the people behind the movie actually listened, which was very strange. So strange, in fact, that there is a huge conspiracy theory about the movie now that the bad trailer was released on purpose. I'm here for this conspiracy theory, but also, it's pretty clearly not true. Anyway, they pulled it, they redesigned the Sonic, and now he's freaking adorable. Good redesign. Good job, guys. He was the internet baby for a while, and then Baby Yoda happened and everyone forgot. Anyway, I'm very excited about the movie. That's pretty much the whole reason I'm making this video, and this stupid creation that I love, but also hate. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm very conflicted. I also felt like challenging myself a little, so I figured I would go ahead and make some kind of mascot head. Originally, I was thinking just straight up furry mask. Is it called a fursuit head? Yes. But for the sake of adding keywords to this video and making it more shareable, I decided to straight up make a Sonic mask and it came out very strangely. So let's talk about the process. So for starters, I watched a couple videos about making fursuit heads because I did not know what I was doing and that was the most translatable skill that I could think of. Considering that I've never done something like this before, didn't come out too bad. I think my sculpting skills translate fairly well. So the first thing I did in this process was that I got a semi nice piece of fabric and I made a sort of bag to go over the head to protect you from the scratchy foam. So I actually managed to find some reasonably priced foam on walmart.com surprisingly. It's actually a bed liner and I think it was like $14. After that I cut out some spots for the eyes and the mouth area. Also you're gonna see some different colored foam in this video. The only difference between the white and green foam is that the green foam is one inch thick and the white foam is two inch thick. They were just purchased from different places. It doesn't really make a difference. It's fine. After that I made the bucket head base which is kind of just like a piece of foam that just wraps right around the head and that just becomes the full on interior part of the sculpture and then you seal it off on top so that it wraps around your head. Spoiler, it's too high. I had to add padding to the inside to make it actually fit my head. Figuring out where to even start with this was kind of difficult. I went through the trailer and took like a million screenshots just to try and get him from all angles. The way that they designed his eyes for the remake is so good. They did such a good job. So I started kind of shaping the mouth. I put like a muzzle kind of thing first so that I could get like a solid profile, make it stick out enough. From there, I slowly built up the cheeks and the jaw. And then I also worked on the bridge of where his kind of brow bone sort of thing would be and his eyebrows. Also, if you'll notice in the background of this crafting video, there's a nutcracker that looks an awful lot like the ones in Danny Gonzalez's videos. We actually found that nutcracker on a stretch of highway between Phoenix and LA shortly after Danny and Drew did a show in Phoenix. So we're like a solid 90% sure that that was actually one of his nutcrackers from their show. So Danny, if you happen to lose a nutcracker on a stretch of highway between Arizona and California, you can't have him back. We're homies now. I just wanted you to know that he's in good hands. After I attacked the ears, everything got really difficult and time consuming all at once. I don't even know what to call these, so I'm just gonna call them fins. But the boy has these things sticking out of the back of his head. Figuring out how to shape and seal them was a little bit difficult, but I got it to work. And I'm actually pretty happy with the profile of this, as well as the shape of these. As you can tell, at the time of filming this video, I haven't put the fabric on him yet. It's gonna be an even bigger pain to skin him. Why is it that if you skin something, you're taking skin off and not putting skin on? I'm very excited about this. It looks ridiculous and I'm very happy with it. Nom 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 nom. 
So before I go to the other room and add skin to my boy, I'd like to talk to you about today's sponsor and a very useful source for learning how to do this kind of weird crap, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. With premium membership, you have unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Whether you want to fuel your creativity, curiosity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. One of the classes that I found very useful was the Introduction to Procreate, illustrating on the iPad Pro. Nowadays I make pretty much all of my digital art in Procreate, and I am constantly finding out new, cool, hidden features that I did not know existed before. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when you compare it to in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can use the link in the description to sign up for a two-month free trial. Now that that is all out of the way, let's go add some fancy fur to the boy. So from here, I needed some fabric so that I could skin the boy, and I also needed some craft foam for the eyes. The next step was removing the large portion of the eye holes from the eye socket. I feel like I'm dissecting Sonic a little bit here. I then glued in the fabric mask to the inside of the foam. The next step was to cover the entire thing in duct tape. The reason that you're doing this is to create a fabric pattern. It's kind of like creating a false skin that you can then use to make a more accurate skin suit. I also ended up running out of my fancy duct tape and I had to go to the dollar store and get a bunch of smaller rolls of cheap disposable duct tape so that I could finish the back of the fins. I had got a bunch of them because I had no idea how much I was actually going to need. Once the entire head was covered with duct tape, I could start drawing on the lines to plan out where I was going to cut apart the pieces for the fabric. Using a box cutter blade, I very carefully cut all of the duct tape along the seam lines. And then from there, I just had to peel him. No big deal. I used paper towel to cover the adhesive side of the duct tape so that I could handle them better. Keeping all of these from folding and sticking to themselves was incredibly difficult. And I also made sure to number every single piece both on the duct tape and on the foam figure itself, so that I knew where every single piece went. Once all of the pattern pieces were cut out, it was time for fabric. So for this project, I decided to use a type of fabric called Minky, which is kind of like a very short fur. I traced all of the pattern pieces on the back of the fabric and cut them out. Then I roughly placed them on the foam figure so that I could make sure that they were all fitting together properly. Sewing is an entirely separate video, so I just did all of the sewing off camera. The entire face is sewn by hand and all of the back fins are sewn with my sewing machine. And then from there I began to glue the fabric onto the mask. Sonic is very creepy without eyes. Starting with some white craft foam, I cut out some rough eye shapes and then trimmed them to fit within the sockets. For the pupils of the eyes that you're supposed to be able to see through, I actually just layered nylon tulle, which is the type of fabric that they use to make tutus. In order to glue the eyes in place, I pinned them all from the outside and then used the glue gun on the inside of the mask to adhere it to the socket. And then the very last thing I did was to carve a nose out of styrofoam and paint it black with acrylic paint. And so the process is complete. So now that the crafting part is done, it's time for a very strange montage. this. I'm trying to cut back on my stuff, which means I'm probably gonna give it away to one of my friends. I don't know which one yet. What have we learned in this video? Hot glue is hot and it will burn all of your fingers. Soft foam is a good material that I should use more often. The internet is the power of the people, and if it yells loud enough, corporations will listen. And Sonic is baby. <gasps> what if I made a baby Yoda head? Don't get ahead of yourself, Echo. Thank you for coming with me on this very strange journey. If you like this video and my strange internet antics, then please subscribe. You get 1,200 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. But I think that is everything, and I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you later. Goodbye. Minky and Josh. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this is so stupid.